House of the Dragoon, season one. Before we get into the praise, the criticism, I just want to put on the record real quick in terms of my own obsession with dragons and wanting to see more badass dragons on the live action screen. These last couple episodes delivered in some huge ways. Consistently throughout the season, not only have we gotten interesting dragon designs and the dragons just in the way they move and the noises they make, having like discernible personalities, but the shots around the dragon, despite occasionally the VFX dipping into good, not great territory or in one scene kind of bad, the presence of these beasts is up there with the best of the best live action dragons of all time for a TV show. Two specific shots are going to be burned in my head, and both of them are actually from the final episode of the season. One, Damon in the cave with the dragon, and it's just igniting a torrent of flame above him. Wow! And on top of that, the shadow of the gargantuan dragon in the clouds <laughs> looming over the smaller dragon. Yeah! I'm, I'm a slut for some dragons. But okay, let's get into talking about the successes and failures of House of the Dragon season one as a whole, with obviously a bit more focus on episodes nine and 10, because those are the ones we haven't specifically talked about here on the channel. But getting into the season as a whole, looking back at it, it does feel like quite a bit of setup. I have no problem with that though. Almost all of my favorite shows, unless they're mini series, have a season one that just feels like very well done setup. And if you're going to criticize season one of House of the Dragon for being a lot of setup, I think you also need to acknowledge that it has been some very entertaining, nuanced, well-written setup for a majority of the show. Character decisions and mentalities, flaws, stupidity has all been consistent enough to feel remarkably human. And seeing these people grow up together, doing these time skips to where the pieces now lie where they are and it feels like war is unavoidable for very obvious reasons, there isn't like one dumb character choice that was made aside from one that really matches character that I feel like makes all of this unavoidable. But even that one dumb decision, it kind of feels like it happened so late that I was like, okay, this is gonna happen anyway. Now this is just what's gonna start the violence. And of course I'm talking about Spoiler warning here, episode 10, the dragon fight between the two young let. This is why, you know, they need to better regulate dragons in Westeros. You can't just be given young kids dragons. <laughs> Because while the door to peace was slowly creaking shut, Aemond murdering his cousin, nephew? I don't even try to keep his family tree straight because I know what's to come and it's gonna get much harder. The setup where Aemond once loose Luke, let me call him Luke's eye, the noble being like, not in my house, the fear in his voice of knowing how bad this could be if this does go down under his roof. Loved that little note as well. Luke taking off, Eamon chasing after him, the harassment. Luke not being sure if this is an attempted murder. Eamon just kind of being like, I'm harassing him, trying to f with him. And then Luke getting away, coming out, trying to blind the dragon so he can go further off and escape, thinking he's fighting for his life. Eamon losing control of his dragon. So it actually does murder the prince and the dragon in that look of, oh, shit, on Eamon's face. All completely believable, all so well set up. The shots throughout it, magnificent. Way better than I even had an expectation set for this scene, which I knew loosely was going to be happening in some way. I thought it was more gonna be like a planned ambush, but the way it unfurled here, loved it. I've seen some people say that making it more of an accident than it was in the books is taking away agency from Amond. I disagree with that evaluation because it was still his decision to recklessly chase and harass this younger prince who he knew the weight of everything between them right now. And it's him filled with agency. It's him being like, oh, I'm gonna make this dumb decision. End result is still a thousand percent on Eamon's shoulders. So I get how some people could have that criticism. I just disagree with it. Cause I think it also lines up with this character, Eamond, who so far throughout the season, at least is constantly trying to position himself as this, I'm badass. I'm I'm equal to anyone else in this family. Of course, I'm willing to do these things for war. They even reemphasize that with the whole I scene. Then him seeing the consequences of that, like chest thumping and you see just Oh no. I like that. Kayla had a great comment on this section as well, which is that it also harkens back to Viserys' warning about how these are dragons. They're not 
tamed their wild animals. And on top of that, we even get a reflection between how Aemond isn't really in control of his dragon too well. Meanwhile, Daemon goes into this cave extremely respectful and treats the dragon as it should be treated, showing their difference in maturity and experience, which is, I believe, going to become a very big defining point of contention and advantage between these two. God, there's so much to talk about. We even have, I haven't even touched on this yet, the birthing scene, which was far more graphic than I expected, even for an A Song of Ice and Fire show, and was like the beginning of a setup between Damon and Rhaenyra that I loved. Because during the period of life where Rhaenyra ended up married to Damon, I feel like he was the most controlled. And now that the situation around them is become so chaotic, we're seeing that other side of Damon come back to the forefront, the one that was more established years ago in the beginning of the season, which I took with age just kind of tampered down, the coals weren't blazing anymore, but once the civil war looms and the threat to his family comes out, of course, Damon reverts back to his more brutal self we saw at the beginning of the season. Absolutely great character development. Not that Damon hasn't been an absolute threat throughout the season. I mean, he just decapitated a guy a couple episodes ago, but the energy from him feels a bit different once this all begins. It seems like he's more angry, and I think we're going to see a lot more anger about the death of Viserys, specifically in the issues he had with him that were never quite resolved, really come into play for season two. That is my prediction. And that look of fear in Rhaenyra's eyes where she is like, oh my god, this guy is dangerous, but he's my closest ally. Fuck. And I personally believe his insolence, his bulking at her authority at some times and trying to remain in control is part of the reason Rhaenyra kept hesitating before taking that next crucial we are going to war step. And it's why she kept talking about her allies. It's a representation of like the person who is supposed to be standing directly at my side. I do not feel like they are the ally I need them to be. But then we get her being crowned while burning the fetus that came out of her. Ah, Emma Darcy. I didn't expect with this actor coming in only after the time skip, me to become so attached to their performance of this character, especially with Millie Alcock knocking it out of the park for her younger version, but I hold them both equally in my mind now for this character. Season one was the opening of a chess game, right? That's the metaphor I'm gonna go with because I've been playing way too much chess recently. There's been so much buildup for central control and the first major piece is taken. And that usually signifies a whole lot of bloodshed to come. So not only has season one succeeded in making me become incredibly emotionally attached to these characters, I feel the weight of the politicking constantly and it's written smart and entertaining enough that I am never bored and always speculating on what could come next, true motivations, is people lying right now, who can I really trust? Ah! But the amount of dread I feel for season two makes me wish I hadn't known the source material to the point that I do, which is it's still not like clear memories, but it's there to an extent because I want to be totally surprised by what happens in each beat. And the show has changed enough that I feel like people who even do know the source material better than myself can still have some moments of like, oh, shit. So yeah, episode nine ended with a little bit of like, remember how bad season eight of Game of Thrones was? We, we, we could get that bad again. Let's hope we don't. But overall, episode 10 just reminded me that a bad moment does not undo a ton of very well laid foundation. And that's why a strong foundation is oh so important. And on one final kind of strange note, I love the green versus black debate that has popped up online. It's so fun to see people just debating, going, at it, having a blast with a show that seems to be universally appreciated. We haven't had that in a while, at least on the level of popularity that House of the Dragon has hit, and it just reminds me of early seasons Game of Thrones. It puts this warm feeling in my chest of like, oh, we all care again! Yay, friends can fight and have a good, happy debate while they're drinking and playing games. Wonderful. The only people I don't like are the people who are like, I can't believe adults or arguing about this stupid show. We all know it's not serious. Like, these people are just having fun. Stop trying to act superior to people having fun with a show. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Ugh. How could adults care about a piece of fiction? that, you know, is meant to be had fun with and aimed at adults. I always just imagine those people being like, I'm so much better than everyone who's just having fun and enjoying media. Oh, I'm so much better. Go.
yourself. You don't have to be a part of the debate. Just leave people having fun alone. Why is the internet struggle with that so much? Why can't the internet just leave people who are having fun the f alone? This expression from Emma Darcy, the final shot of episode 10. Everything you need to know for season two. Ooh. But anyway, those are just my concluding thoughts on House of the Dragon season one. I am so happy that we on the channel can be done with the era of shows again and can go back to talking about other things. It's fun, I enjoy it, the videos are easier to make, but I really wanna get back to what this channel's bread and butter is. So expect more literature content coming down the road in the coming weeks. Love y'all, there's gonna be a Halloween special on Saturday and have a good one, peace.